Hi, we're here with my friend Alan from UC Berkeley, and we have a project that they were working on over there that actually involves a flywheel on a go-kart. Alan, most go-karts don't have flywheels, um, and you actually designed this one and built one. You give, give our uh, viewers a little bit of an idea of what, um, how you, how you, why you put a flywheel on a go-kart and how you designed it. Uh, well, the purpose of the flywheel is to improve the regenerative braking efficiency of this hybrid electric vehicle. And the design of the flywheel was based um, primarily on safety factors. So um, outside the flywheel is this giant aluminum casing. And we, we did um, FEA analysis along all the bearings and all the parts of the flywheel. So for most electric vehicles, there's there's standards that recommend a, at least a four or 4.1 factor of safety, but based on our tests and our calculations, our flywheel has a factor of safety of 5.3. Yeah, so that was basically the motivating factor beside or behind every single part of the flywheel design, just safety. And um, this fly, this particular flywheel, it looks a lot like an electric motor, really. Can you give us an idea of what the uh, internal parts are, are kind of comprised of? Uh, well, the flywheel actually is um, part of a custom motor that was built in-house. So the, the flywheel is attached to the rotor of the motor, and the rotor also has the permanent magnets, which are right here attached to the cart, just for demonstration purposes. But there's more inside there. There's a total of 24 of these guys. And the, there's co the coils of the motor are in the stator of the flywheel. So what happens is during regenerative braking, the, the the system pulls current away from the traction motors that into the flywheel's coils and then that will start spinning up the flywheel. And then after a certain point when we want to accelerate again, it will uh, switch the terminals to this flywheel motor and the flywheel begins acting as a generator because all the energy gets stored in its inertia, in its rotational energy. And then when it acts as a generator, it starts pumping current back into the two traction motors, which means it would take, it draws less current from the battery packs. And then this just basically helps the overall efficiency of the system and improves the battery life of uh, the two packs. The um, host UI for the go-kart, and on the left side is flywheel RPM, and on the right side is the system current flow to and from the battery packs. So. Uh, red would be the current draw from the battery packs, and green is the current being sent back. Now, this is just for demonstration purposes only. Uh, it's not exactly how the cart would behave in a real uh, situation, but it's just to showcase the regenerative capabilities of the of the system. Uh, okay, so here the flywheel is just spinning up by itself, and you see how it draws current, and when it breaks, it sends current back into the bat battery packs because. Um, the motors aren't running. But now when the motors are running, um, after a certain point, when the flywheel breaks, the motors will draw substantially less current just for a split second because at that moment, uh, the power is being supplemented by the flywheel, so it draws less from the battery packs. Okay. About how fast does the, uh, the uh, flywheel spin at max speed? Okay. Well, the flywheel was designed for a max speed of 25,000 RPM. All of our tests were conducted at 11,000, just for, again for safety reasons. And today, uh, all of the demos are only um, are only at 2,000 RPM. What's the and what's the max power rating for the uh, flywheel? The flywheel is rated at 2.5 kilowatts at 11,000 RPM. Gotcha. And uh, of course, this is a National Instruments design competition. Yeah. Where's the uh, National Instruments equipment in this design? The um, National Instruments equipment is all uh, in the front of the car. There's a C Rio and a CAN bus. So the C Rio basically handles all of the um, signals that are that come like to and from the sensors and the motor controllers. So there's uh, pedal position sensors for both the throttle and the brake. There's all the current voltage. Um, measurements for every single one of these motors and in and out of the battery packs and stuff like that. And then the CAN bus um, sends, sends signals to the three motor controllers. There's a motor controller for each 
rear wheel and one for the flywheel. What's the next step for the, this project? What are you guys doing on it now? Right. Next steps, well there, there's uh, many places for improvement. So we are actually redesigning the battery packs right now to try to basically larger capacity, less weight, you know, just, just a lot of optimizing these parameters. Um, probably the biggest thing would be the control code on the cart because currently we're only running open loop control because uh, PID control just was too unstable. There was a large current overshoot when we sent um, braking back or when, during regen braking when we sent current back. Um, it would overload what the, um, what the battery packs can safely accept. So we, uh, just for a split second, but we wanted to minimize that. So with open loop control, it would, it sent a prediction of what current to expect so the flywheel could anticipate that and draw more current rather than letting it flow back into the batteries. Gotcha. Well, it's an interesting work, Alan. Uh, it was quite a project. It must, be, must have been fun working on it. Yeah, it was definitely a great experience for me and the rest of my team. <laughs> great. Thanks. All right. Yep, no problem.